Hi, this is Dana Daly, and I'm going to talk to you today about getting started with the fibromyalgia TENS and physical therapy study. You've done all the training to get ready. We just want to do a quick review of study activities in order to help you get ready so you can begin to enroll. This is actually a list of the contact information. You should have this actually in a report cover in your clinics, but it lists the FM TIPS study team contacts for Kepros, Rock Valley, Advanced PT, University of Illinois Chicago, and Genesis. In the middle, you'll see this information about our phone number, email, our website. One thing that is new is that in talking with the IRB, when people complete their e-consent for the study, we need a second signature. And that is something the study staff will do. If you find you have someone who comes to visit too and hasn't completed their e-consent, but wishes to do that, contact us by clicking on the login screen on the website, and then you'll actually see this visit to immediate consent help. Click on that information of the current date and time, and you'll actually be connected to the study staff immediately. This will allow us to then complete the second signature and let you know that study procedures can begin. When you go to the website, there's this information here bottom, bottom middle that talks about how you actually log in. So you click on the login, the password is fmtips at hcs2020. The other thing you can find on the website under this login section are study information and video library, the electronic versions of the study manuals, brochures and flyers, our study newsletters. You can also order equipment or supplies. And so there's a lot of information that you can find on the website that can be helpful to you under the login section. Just as a quick overview, when we talk about why we actually are completing the fibromyalgia TENS and physical therapy study, one of the things we know is that people with fibromyalgia have difficulty with movement because it's painful or they're fearful of movement. And one of the things that we've learned through our randomized controlled trials is that TENS actually helps relieve pain with movement in people with fibromyalgia. So we wanted to actually take this to a real world setting. So the best place to do that is actually in physical therapy clinics. So we really wanna test whether adding TENS treatment to PT is feasible for fibromyalgia patients. And we really hope to find out if they get relief from pain when they're active, if participants increase adherence to PT, and if they're able to help reach their functional goals and reduce drug use. So just a quick review of the therapist's responsibilities. Some of those that are study related are completing the training for human subjects protection and then for the type of clinic that you're working in, whether that's TENS or no TENS, to comply with the IRB regulations, keep an inventory of the study materials, remember to charge your TENS units and iPads about every two weeks, and our goal is that you enroll one patient a month in your clinic. And again, contact us with questions. You can talk to your study contact that I mentioned at the beginning of this presentation. Some things that are patient related, being able to identify those patients with fibromyalgia, those who have chronic neck pain and fibromyalgia, chronic back pain and fibromyalgia. You'll want to introduce the patient to the study, supply the tablet for eligibility screening, and complete the patient-specific functional scale at baseline in every 30 days while in PT or at clinic intervals. And you also want to check at each of the PT visits one, two, and three to make sure that the patient has completed their study requirements in order to continue in the study. So this is our graphic of the PT decision points, and you'll actually find this in your clinician manual. But as you look at this screen, the green squares are for things that say go, blue is when there's a decision point, Yellow is a no, and you actually have a caution, which usually leads you either to green or red. Red means stop. Again, green means go. So at PT visit one, you want to identify that patient, talk to them about the study, complete the patient-specific functional scale. If they're interested, have them do the eligibility screening on the tablet. Once that's completed, your clinic should actually get an email to the designated person saying it's been completed and if they're eligible or not eligible. They'll get an invitation in their email at home to complete the e-consent before visit two. You'll then want to check when they come to visit two that it's been completed by checking that email. If they have, they can continue. And then for PT visit two, what happens depends on whether you have a clinic that is a TENS clinic or a no TENS. If it's a TENS clinic, you'll actually complete the TENS instruction. For the TENS or no TENS clinics, you want to talk about the importance of doing sit and stand for the research homework and also to complete that research homework, hopefully in the next 24 hours after they complete PT visit two. 
if they did not complete their e-consent and they do not wish to complete it at visit to participation ends. But if they do want to complete it, the therapist can facilitate having them do their e-consent through their email link and then contact the study so we can complete that second signature when they're done and then we'll let you know that you can begin. Over on the right, we move to the blue square. So between visit two and visit three, they should do their research homework done before the start of visit three. When they come on visit three, you'll wanna to check to make sure they've done that. If they have done it, you can continue PT as prescribed and they continue in the study. If they have not done their research homework, that means their participation ends. So for those in the no tens clinics, that typically means participation is done. You can also let the study know if you like. For the tens clinics, you would ask for those tens units back which leads to those awkward conversations that we actually put in the laminated forms as well as in your manuals about some bullet points, some things that you can do. We encourage you to practice saying those to each other. So then when you do have to say it in the clinic, it's not so awkward. So in terms of study flow for the TENS group, you can see on the left, we start with the eligibility screen. The next point is e-consent and then research homework day one. And then participants will do research homework at day one, day 30, day 60, day 90, and day 180. So a total of six months they're in the study. We do ask that they wear the TENS unit at least two hours per day when they're active. Participants will be paid after each research homework session is done for up to a total of $200, and they get to keep the two Quelflex TENS units, which have a value of about $600 all total. If you're a clinic that's in the no TENS group, you have the same process with one exception. After this completion of research homework day 60, what will happen is the participants will actually be shipped a TENS unit and then the study staff will complete either a video conference or a phone instruction on how to utilize the TENS units. They'll do a very brief research homework on day 65, but then they will continue wearing those TENS units for the last four months of the study. So this group has two months without TENS and four months with TENS for a total of six months. They receive the same reimbursement of $200 and they get to keep the two Qualflex TENS units when they're complete. All right, so that's just a quick overview. So next I have a few questions on a quiz so that you can see how well you remember some of the things that we talked about. So for question one, if a patient has not completed e-consent prior to visit two, you may complete the visit and have them fill out the consent in the waiting room at the conclusion of your session to save time. Is this true or false? So the answer is false. One of the things when you're completing a study, you really can't begin study procedures until the consent is complete. The consent document actually tells the participant what the actual procedures of the study will be so that they know their responsibilities and what to expect during the study. So we wouldn't want them to start study procedures and then do consent. And again, if you're doing consent on visit two, use the login on the website to let us know and we'll get that second signature for you right away. Question two, a patient comes to visit three and hasn't done her homework. What do you tell her? A, the timing of the research homework is plus or minus five days, so make sure you do it tomorrow. B, it's okay to skip this one. C, I'm sorry, you'll have to stop participation in the study, but you can keep the TENS units. D, I'm sorry, you'll have to stop participation in the study and you'll need to return the TENS units. The answer is D. I'm sorry, you'll have to stop participation in the study and you'll need to return the TENS units. This is why it becomes really important on that visit too, after you've done TENS instruction or you've done instruction on the research homework and the importance of completing that before they come back on visit through three, because the consequence if they don't do their research homework, their participation does end in the study. If you find that you need to get someone's TENS units back and they don't bring them to visit three, let the study know and we will take over getting the TENS units back from there. That's not something we expect you to do in the clinic. Ideally, if you can remind them to do their research homework within 24 hours of that visit too, I think that will work the best and will help remind patients to just do it and get it done. Question three, if a new therapist starts working at your clinic, he can begin enrolling for FM tips after you teach him how to do it. True or false? The answer is false. 
When we have new therapists come into the clinic, we like them to continue, continue to complete the same education process that you guys did, completing human subject protection, whether that's by city training or with um, instruction video that we work with before they can begin study procedures. Um, it may be a case of different clinics may actually be able to do some of the training, but that's something we'll be in contact. Just let us know that you have someone and we will work on contacting you and figuring out how to get the training completed. But you would want to have that done and then also be approved by the IRB to be able to be in the study. Just like we had all of you go through and get submitted to the IRB and then you're, you were able to begin enrolling. So the same thing happens with new clinicians in your clinic. All right, last question. Question four, a study participant complains that she keeps forgetting to use her TENS device at home. What should you do? A, don't worry about it because FM Tips is capturing that data and will know. B, tell her she should try to use it as often as she can. C, help her identify what she could do to increase her TENS wearing time. The answer is C, help her identify what she could do to increase her TENS wearing time. One of those challenges that patients sometimes have are figuring out how to put the TENS unit into their daily schedule. So again, thinking about minimum of 30 minute session time up to two hours per day. Now they can wear it longer than two hours a day, but that's kind of our minimum. So it's helpful to sometimes talk about when it might be a good time when they're active. If they can't do it when they're active, they can certainly do it at rest, but we prefer active. Um, but sometimes some problem solving might help in terms of different ways that you can do it. And sometimes it's a question of trial and error but just do your best and try and help the participant figure out, figure out when might work best for her or him. All right, thank you all for your hard work. We appreciate all the training that you've gone to, all the thought and the practice that you have done. So we're excited to have you get started. Please, again, contact us if you have any questions. Thank you.